You're watching Power Nation. Today on Music City Trucks, Meekum's John Craman stops by. You're really taking a nice job with that vintage Bronco look, yet thoroughly modern underneath. Man, look at the mess you guys made here. <laughs> then it's time to install our James Duff suspension kit. Let's get the inners in. That looks amazing. Welcome to Music City Trucks. I'm Brandon Burke. And I'm Mark Christ. And as you can see, we're back on our 1974 Bronco project. The last time you saw this thing, we had this beautiful body assembled with the help of some nice sheet metal from Dennis Carpenter and also our Carolina CTR9 spot welder. We're really happy how it turned out, but we've got to have some components in there to make this thing move. And the cat's out of the bag now. You can see we've got a bunch of components here on the floor that we've picked. We're going to talk about why. And to help us out, we've got our friend here, John Craman from Meekum Auctions. We're going to talk about why we chose some of these parts and the future of our Bronco. You know, it's really cool, guys, coming in here and seeing how you're sketching and planning this out. It, to me, this is all automotive jewelry. I started with Meekum Auctions back in 2006. We went on television in 2008 so it's been over 15 years now so as you could probably have imagined supercharged coyote i mean coyote was the bar we even just took it a step further with this one well certainly since we first saw the coyote five liter all the way back in 2011 it has established itself as the go-to engine for ford upgrades what kind of horsepower output are we looking at with this thing uh it's close to 800 oh, horsepower my in a Bronco. Love it. <laughs> I would say that the Bronco market has reached fever pitch at this time. Let me get, get an example. Uh, a lot of excitement over the recent sale of Parnelli Jones's 1969 race Bronco, known as Big Ole. We knew it would be the most expensive and the best known Bronco to ever hit the auction block, and it paid off in a big way. It fetched an amazing $1.87 million dollars which just confirms just how popular and how cool and how sought after Broncos are right now. Now we're calling this the Beach Cruiser Bronco. Okay, all okay. right. There it is. Caribbean turquoise. Cool. Uh, it's Caribbean turquoise, Wimbledon white. Um, uh, Seafoam's our sponsor. Obviously we've got a partial wrap going on there and uh, that's, that's kind of what we're going for. At a glance, this may look like a original stock Bronco with a lift and wheels and tires. Well, and that's what I was gonna say. You guys have really done a masterful job once again of taking just the overall clean, good look of a stock unmodified Bronco and building on that theme, yet beneath all that sheet metal and up underneath, all modern state-of-the-art components. Very well done. I think taking the classic design of the Bronco and all the new stuff is really making this project timeless. So overall, what's, what's your take on now that you've seen, you've seen the body and you see we have the aftermarket chassis and you know all the other supporting components and you kind of get an idea of where we're going with this. What's your take on, on where this Bronco is going to land as far as where the market is right now? Well, we know a couple things in regard to the resto mod bronco market and that is is it's really really hot right now but everybody does one completely different everybody has their own ideas on how they should be done what i like about this particular build it's a little bit different from a lot of the other ones that we see and that it is not adorned with a lot of exterior goodies uh, and, and that's what makes this look so great. You're really taking a nice job of that vintage Bronco look, yet thoroughly modern underneath. You know, this has really got to be a big deal to you guys uh, after all of the time and effort to create this, and it's all going to pay off at the auction. First thing I want to hear once I say that SEMA is, what is that exhaust system going to sound like? Well, that's <laughs> yet to be determined, but it's going to sound pretty gnarly, I can okay. tell you that. What I really look forward to is having you guys there in person, be able to answer questions about it, talk about it, but also to share in the excitement of what we're all hoping is gonna be a really big hammer price. We'll see you there. Up next, we begin fitting our new suspension from James Duff. 
Well, we had a really great visit with our friend John Craman from Mecham Auctions, and he gave us some insight on where we're headed with our Bronco, but now it's time to get to work. We got the Bronco cut off the fab table and over here on the lift. Now it's time to make this Bronco a roller, and that means mounting and installing our suspension. And we got Monster Mike from James Duff here to help us out. Thanks, man, for coming. Hey, guys. Man, look at the mess you guys made here. <laughs> it's a good thing I showed up. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so when looking for a suspension, we wanted something that would go fast, go slow, and go anywhere, because it is a beach cruiser Bronco. So what did you bring us? Well, Brandon, this is the Dual Sport Monster Suspension System from James Duff. And what does this kit actually consist of? Well, this is the high performance package and it's for a two and a half inch lift for an early Bronco. And the front actually consists of these T-Rex arms, which are a standalone product that you can buy, as well as the coil springs, shock towers, the high performance shocks. And then from there, we've got the adjustable track bar, heim steer system, and a front sway bar. What about the rear setup? Yeah, so for the rear, you've got a dual triangulated four link, and that also has high performance shocks, coil springs, it's got upper and lower shock mounts, coil buckets, and then of course a universal uh, sway bar system. Sweet. <laughs> but yeah, and you'll actually notice that there is uh, some parts here that are custom color, and uh, that was something that, that you guys wanted for your build, yep. and that uh, you did it afterwards. Yeah. And you'll see there's also some bare parts, which of course you guys have a bare frame, so you bent my arm and uh, <laughs> uh, I let you have them bare, but they normally come black powder coated. Yeah. And uh, it looks like we're missing the truss. That's right, we are. We have the truss missing, and that's because it's actually welded on to the axle over here. All right, let's go take a look at them. Yes, what we got here is two custom crate axles built by Curry for the James Duff high performance package. And it's a nine inch and a 44? Yeah, that's right. And then on the rear, you see, we actually send the truss to Curry and then they build the whole axle with the truss and then weld it and powder coat it. Send it to you for bolt on. So all you gotta do is open the box and throw it under the truck. That's right. That's awesome. Yeah. Let's look at the front. Yeah, the front's also great because it comes with the riser bracket, which is part of the bump steer eliminator system inside of this performance package. Okay. All welded on and then of course powder coated. And it also comes with the James Duff brake package on the outside. Okay, sweet. Cool, let's get to work. Uh, yeah. We're gonna start in the front, right? Yep. So let's get the axle moved and start turning some wrenches. Yeah, let's do this. Well, we've got the front axle sitting in place underneath the truck where it's gonna live, but we've got some things we've got to do here on the table first. What is that exactly? Yeah, in order to get started, you've got to get your head units assembled, which means you're gonna take those bushings and you're gonna put them inside the head units. All right, let's do it. All right, we're gonna push this in like this. If you've got strong fingernails, and then turn it over. You go like that. It's gonna push out a little bit. Oh, there you go. Yep, and then you come over here and finish it off. Now we have to go and lubricate the C bushings. It has to be 100% lubricated on the inside and out, not the sides. And the reason why we use dish soap is because as it dries out, you can just spray it and then the water rehydrates it and then. And then it's easy to clean off. It is. When it's done, yeah. yeah. When you wash your truck for the first time, it all just disappears. Okay, so what do we need to do here? What do we start with? All right, so we've got our soap and we wanna go ahead and start coating this part of the axle and that way there's lubrication on every surface that the sea bushing touch. All right. All right. Now, this next point is absolutely critical. Uh, there's a top and bottom to the sea bushing and that's how you get the right degree, you know, how it pivots right. on the axle. So here it says, uh, here, here it says front bottom. And then if you turn it over, it says rear bottom. Okay. So on yours, front bottom, Goes I see, down. I see, I see. Yep. Okay. And now we take our starter bolt with the washer. Okay. And it doesn't matter what hole you start with, just right. go ahead and start threading it in. So these are the actual bolts that go in and they come with a lock washer. Right. Now we're not gonna use a lock washer because the bolts are gonna come back out again and we don't wanna damage the powder coat. Right. So you just put one in there and get it started. Oh, I see why we use those because you wouldn't be able to get these started without those. That's right, they're All too right. short. Okay, so now we can run these in. Yep. We're gonna actually install a radius arm now and uh, we'll do the other side as well. I guess these are the T-Rex arms. <laughs> wow, that was graceful. Thank you. Ooh. What? That looks cool. Okay. There you go. All right, now. 
you have to do the other side and then we start measuring, uh, tightening up the seat yeah. caps. Okay, let's do it. Yep, right on it now. Now, while that's sitting on the ground, is that when you tighten these in? That's right. Slow and easy is the way. All right, we got the radius arms on our crate axle, and now it's time to get it on the frame. All right, let's get it up here, Brandon. So these are pretty beefy coil retainers. You know, what's really nice about this whole system is that you can use it with an aftermarket frame or a factory frame, and everything just folds in as long as your coil buckets are in the factory location. Okay, that's pretty cool. All right. Keep going. All right, stop. I would prefer a little more preload. A little more? Yeah. All right. I'll take more. Mine's pretty uh, loaded. All right, I'm gonna torque the radius arms to set the front wheelbase. What's left? Yep, from there we're gonna go ahead and get the track bar installed, and then we're gonna do the steering and head to the back. Up next, our four link is starting to fall into place nicely. That'll hold it up. Well, we're making some great headway on our Bronco here. We went ahead and got the wheels and tires on the front and down on the ground, which is very exciting because you kind of start to see how this thing's going to look. Uh, we got the adjustable track bar in, so that centered the axle left to right where we want it. And we went ahead and got the steering box and this heavy duty Heim steer kit installed, which actually came with the James Duff suspension kit, but you can buy it on its own too. It's super easy to install. It's a direct bolt in but it's adjustable and it's easy to adjust. So if you need to do an alignment or something like that, you don't have to hassle with it. And then because of this saddle here, it maintains a stock geometry. So you don't have bump steer, which is super nice too. So for the most part, the front is done. All that's left is gonna be install the shocks and the shock towers and then the sway bar as well. But all of that stuff can wait till the end after we get the rear installed, which we're getting ready to do now. Yeah, we have stock wheelbase set at 92 inches. And the first thing we're gonna do is install these lower coil mounts onto the axle. All right, so while Brandon installs the lower coil retainers, next we're gonna put these coil buckets in place and these actually get welded onto the frame. We're gonna use this plumb bob here. We're gonna get it perfectly centered over the lower coil retainer and then we're gonna weld it. After that's done, then it's time to mount these frame brackets and that's gonna get your links upper and lower onto your truss, which is already welded onto the axle. Hold that. And then you watch it here and center it while yep. I get it tight. Just kind of throw that C-clamp on there, give me a little bit of pressure. Yeah, that looks good right there, man. Yep. Now with the buckets tacked in place, we move on to the front link mounts. Now we just gotta tack this bracket in. Yep. Get the upper on. Got to protect that powder coat. This is why I love four links. The lower links set the wheelbase and the upper links determine the pinion angle. And this install is pretty simple because our crate axle was already complete with the truss and mounts. All right, got the axle set where we want it, got the links in, all the brackets tacked into the frame. Now we just gotta get the coils in. Let's do it. Up until now, our Bronco has been living on a table, so this is a big moment. You good? Yeah. All right, come on down, Brandon. That'll hold it up. This installation's super easy. Now that the vehicle supporting its own weight, it's time to mount those shock mounts, shocks, and sway bars. And this thing's gonna be what everyone wants to see, a roller. 
One thing about being a car guy is I love a really good assortment of tools and especially getting new tools. And we just got in this long reach quarter inch ratchet. It's a six inch extended length so you can get into those tight spots, say in engine bays where you got accessories or bill housing bolts, even underneath dashes where you got really tight space. Um, the one thing I like about this is it's battery powered, so you don't have that cumbersome hose following you around, getting tangled, or even scratching some paint, which I'm concerned about. And that 16 volt battery is the same battery Matco uses in a lot of their other cordless tools. So you can swap it out for your impact or your work light. So it makes it a really versatile tool to have in your arsenal, and this is gonna make my life in the shop a lot easier. Next, just a few more pieces to the puzzle and our Bronco becomes a roller. We're plugging away on the suspension on the rear of our Bronco here. Got the springs in it. It's time to move on to the shocks and the sway bar. Brandon's working on getting the shock mount installed now. One thing I want to talk about though that we didn't mention earlier is the brake setup on these crate axles. Now when you order these axles, they can come with upgraded brakes like ours did. We've got disc brakes all the way around. What's cool about that is these are James Duff specific and they're OEM style brakes. So they come already installed on the axle and they're easy to service. For instance, the rear brake setup here is for 97 to 01 Explorer. So if you get to drive in your Bronco and it needs a brake job, the parts are super easy to find. Now we took ours even a step further and we upgraded the pads and rotors to the EBC USR rotors and yellow stuff pads. Uh, the USR rotor just looks nice, but it's got the grooving in it there to expel all the gases and the dust. But then also the yellow stuff pads, a great all around pad. It's okay for daily drivers, but then it's also great for spirited driving or if you've got extra horsepower like our Bronco does here. Also done the same thing on the front. Now it's time to move on to getting the shocks installed since Brandon's done tacking it in over there. Uh, these are James Duff shocks that they make. They've got an entire line of shocks. They've got their classic line and their high performance line. And these are the high performance shocks that actually come standard with this high end suspension kit that we ordered. Uh, it's valve specifically for early Broncos and specifically for high performance trucks like ours. They're designed to work great on the street and off road as well. Just gonna get these things installed and we're getting close. This kit actually comes standard with two shocks in the rear, but you can upgrade to this quad shock setup, which is what we chose. Let's get the inners in. They recommend this upgrade if your Bronco's making 500 horsepower or more. Plus, it just looks cool. All right, let's do the other side. Put that bolt in for me. We don't really need to get all the shocks installed now for mock-up purposes, but we wanna show you the install. That made it go. That looks amazing. Got it? Yeah. There you go. The last piece of the puzzle is the anti-roll bar, which is actually a really cool piece. Once we get it tacked in, we'll put the arms on for the links. Look at that. All right. Let it hang. With the front shocks mounted, we can move on to the sway bar. You know, I'm against roll, body roll. Really? But I could be swayed. I really need to stop telling Brandon my suspension jokes. All right, so last is these sway bar stops, but we're not gonna put them in during mock-up, but they do stop the sway bar from moving left to right. Yeah, we'll do that after, you know, when we go to final assembly, right? Sounds good. All right, what's next, wheels and tires? Heck yeah. <clears throat> well, you guys probably got a little sneak peek at our wheel and tire earlier, but let's talk about exactly what we chose. Uh, since we went with that nice big lift from James Duff, we're able to fit a 35 inch tire under our Bronco, which is pretty cool. Uh, for our wheel, we went to Custom Wheel Outlet for a set of methods. Uh, methods are kind of the go-to nowadays. They're the modern version of a classic wheel. This is a cast wheel. This is a 305 NV, so it's actually an off-the-shelf wheel, but it looks really nice. It's got a matte black lip with a machine face. And then for our tires, General Grabber X3. This is the latest version of the mud terrain from General. And it's really great because it's got dirt, mud, and even 
rock capabilities, uh, but it's also good on the street because it's got a multi-pitch pattern tread. It makes it quiet when you drive it on the street. And then also it's got the siping to help remove the water. So it's even fine to drive on wet roads. Uh, so it's kind of a tire that does a little bit of everything. And plus it looks really nice. How could we not run those red letters out? I mean, this is just a great looking tire. 35, 12, 50, 17. I think this is gonna be a winner. Let's get them on here and get this thing on the ground. So with the wheels and tires finally going on, we're calling it a wrap. Well, Monster Mike, thanks for coming out and bringing these two Broncos to get some inspiration, providing us with the suspension that we got installed. I know you gave us a lot more other parts to install, but I think we're gonna do that during mock-up. I just wanted to say thanks again for coming out, donating your time and effort and knowledge to get this truck built. Yeah, no problem, guys. It's definitely my pleasure. You know, other than the extended brake lines and the bump stops, this suspension is in. Yeah, I love how it turned out. I know it's a little higher now than it's going to sit once we get the truck completely loaded down, and I can't wait to get behind the wheel and see how that thing oh, rides yeah. and drives. You know, this green Bronco actually has the same sus front suspension as this Bronco that we just built. How about you get in there and give it a drive? You can ride, Brandon. I, I, I'm riding. Shotgun. <laughs> I'll let you drive back if we, oh, yeah. if we come back. You know. See you later. Bye. Till next time on <laughs> Music City Trucks. If you want to know more about our Beach Cruiser Bronco, go to PowerNationTV.com and check out our project page. We have current build status, before and after pics, links to parts used, and all the episodes are right there on one page.